Hello, Hello and welcome to the third part of the unified UNHCR Well ID documentation procedure. We will be focusing on pumping tests, taking us all the way from pumping tests to yield optimization. Well, pumping tests are the very last step in the well construction procedure, and the data we will be focusing on um, will allow us to calculate the safe yields. Pumping tests give us also the ID card of a well, and they are the tool to design the exploitation scheme and to calculate aquifer properties. The chronology of pumping tests mostly start with an equipment test, which actually allows us to design the step drawdown test, which consists of at least four different pumping rates, and leading over to the concentrate pumping test and the recovery recovery test. Now, in the well ID uh, documentation procedure, the main focus is on the step drawdown data, since this will allow us to calculate the safe exploitation rate of the well. Now, let us recall the different steps that were used in parts one and two, because the exact same procedure will be used in this part three regarding pump testing data. The first step is to tick the boxes where data is available from your report. Select yes or no, depending on the availability of the data. If this data is available, input it in the second column, as shown. The third step is uh, regarding specific data that cannot be inputted in the checklist and has to be uh, inputted in the specific spreadsheet that is ded dedicated for that and which is called the well ID form. The well ID form uh, is the output of part one and two with the technical data related to it. And the second output we got from parts one and two is the borehole log, which allows you to visualize the data and visualize if there are any problems in the construction of this borehole. Now, on top of that, adding the pump testing data will uh, and relating it with the technical data will allow the tool to calculate the safe yield, but also to estimate operating costs and let you play with it. Let's take the borehole completion report we used in parts one and two and keep on filling uh, the checklist for part three. Same steps as before. Step one, if the data is available, select yes. If it's not, select no. Once uh, you've done that, wherever you have selected yes, you have to input the data in the second column. Uh, the white cells are for manual input, whereas the blue cells mean that the specific data can not be inserted here and will have to be inserted in the special spreadsheets, uh, the well ID form. Let us look at it now. It might look a bit scary, but it is actually fairly simple. You can see already that the white cells uh, show the data you have inputted in the checklist and has been auto automatically transferred. Now all you have to do is fill in the yellow cells manually with your uh, pump testing data and the green cells will be automatically calculated and will give you the desired results. What we need to do now is to fill uh, the drawdown and the uh, pumping rate for each of the steps. The minimum number of steps should be four and the optimal number of steps should be six. The drawdown is defined uh, as the difference between the dynamic water level and the static water level. If we go back to our borer completion report, in our case, I can actually show you one of the most common mistakes that is done when uh, compiling the borer completion report, which is actually to name wrongly the dynamic water level into drawdown. In fact, if you find in the borer completion report that at time zero, the drawdown is not zero, then you're actually dealing with the dynamic water level rather than the drawdown. So we're going to replace the headings of the different columns uh, with the dynamic water level rather than drawdown. And the for step one, the drawdown will be basically the um, dynamic water level at time 60 minus the dynamic water level at time zero. This will give a 0 0.67 meter of drawdown for a, a pumping rate of 20 cubic meter an hour. We will do exactly the same for all the four steps. So we will compile the spreadsheet and automatically the specific drawdown as over Q will, compare, will, will appear in the fourth column. 
As soon as we have the pumping rate and the specific drawdown, the well equation will be automatically plotted in a graph. And you can see that the correlation factor R2 is in this case 0 0.2427. If the correlation factor is lower than 0 0.75, we have to consider our data as of poor quality and the well equation cannot be used uh, directly. So what we need to do is to go back to our data and uh, look at the drawdown. And actually in our case, we can see that the fourth step uh, drawdown, it's actually uh, hardly increased, although the pumping rate increased of 15 cubic meter an hour. This means we can actually discard the fourth step uh, and this highlights also the importance of having at least four steps in the step drawdown testing. And we can use the three, the first three steps. This will plot automatically again the well equation into the graph, bringing the correlation factor R2 to 0 0.9622, which is higher than 0 0.75, meaning that the data, the quality of the data that we're using is good. After that, we will basically have to um, write manually the well constants B and C coming out from the well equation. But on a later stage, uh, uh, this will come automatically in the next version of the tool. And with B and C, the well equation will be solved. And this will bring to uh, the transmissivity, which is basically uh, representing the, the um, aquifer capacity, and to the critical yield, which is uh, which corresponds to a well efficiency of 50%. And uh, if the pumping rate is higher than the critical yield, uh, then this might cause uh, turbulent head losses with uh, clogging and uh, with uh, rapid aging of the wells. Now the outcome of part three is shown here, again with a completed spreadsheet for the pumping test, where you can see all the data that you've uh, inputted in the yellow uh, boxes and the calculated values in the green boxes. In the lower part you just see the summary of the concentrate pumping test and the recovery test as it was introduced in the checklist. But now we get to the interesting part of the whole approach which is the summary of the entire well ID form consisting of the basic well information, the well construction uh, data and the pump is, pumping, res, uh, pumping test data. Now why is this data useful? This takes us back to the very beginning of the introduction of the first part. It is finally a homogeneous data documentation which is easily accessible to any newcomer and allows centralization of all the data. It is also a quality control tool. It will allow us to identify systematically missing data. Now the most interesting outcome of the well ID form is of course that all this data can be used to calculate uh, the different yields that, has, that can be used to design the exploitation scheme of the well. What you see here, all of them can be calculated so they are all green boxes apart from the red box on the bottom left where we've introduced the driller's yield uh, that we obtained from the well construction part two documentation. The three yields that are indicated in the red square are the first one, the critical yield being the ratio between the well constants B and C as was already mentioned before and it represents the yield at which the head losses for turbulent flow are equal to the head losses of the linear flow. The second yield is actually the yield corresponding to the casing itself. It takes no consideration of the aquifer. So basically you can assume that you could have your screen within a bathtub and even then you will have an upper limit of how much water you can draw from this screen uh, with a velocity being smaller than three centimeters. With velocities higher than three centimeters you will create turbulent flow and quick clogging of the screen. So this is really the upper limit of what the screen can give. 
Now the third yield, or the third characteristic yield, is the maximum yield. The maximum yield is constrained by the maximum safe drawdown, which is given on the left side. The maximum safe drawdown is defined by the position of the pump and by the position of the uppermost screen. So the drawdown that is induced by a pumping rate must never go below these limits. So in order to obtain the safe yield that is given at the bottom, we define the lowest of the three uh, characteristic yields and we multiply it times 0 0.8, so it means that it's 80% of the lowest of the, the characteristic yields, which means that all the criteria given above are uh, provided. Now, what else can we do with this? We can see on the right-hand side that we also calculate for each of the yields the theoretical production energy which is given here in blue. And together with this, we can plot the yield against the unit production energy, which is given here in the graph below. Now on the lower part, you have a red box with which you can start to play, because now which is the yield that you will actually use? Uh, for exploitation, of course, the best would be to use the safe yield, which in this case here is 5 cubic meters an hour. Now, of course, we can see that there is a big disparity between the different characteristic yields, varying between 7 and 49. So, we may also be in a situation where we, can s where we will think that it is important to draw more than the safe yield. So, on the, on the lower part, you will see now, for uh, optimization purposes, that you can introduce different design yields in this red box. So now at the moment, we can see we've put in the design yield, and in the second column, we will get the expected associated drawdown, which in this case is very, very low, is only 8 centimeters, and the associated production costs. Now, what happens if we introduce the driller's yield that was um, uh, defined as 56? We will see that the expected drawdown becomes 4.7 meters, and we can also see the production costs. Now, the reason why this driller's yield should never be used is the constraint of the maximum yield. The maximum yield being 49 should never ever be exceeded because this would mean that you either have your pump running dry or the screen running dry, leading to excessive clogging and aging of the well. So now you are well ID specialists. Either you can fill in the forms uh, on existing boreholes uh, yourself, or you can, for instance, also suggest that this ID form be introduced or filled in by drilling contractors. And so we thank you very much and wish you a lot of pleasure doing this. Ciao. Cheers.